the Suzuki community, it's Myron at Zooks Off-Road. Everyone calls me Mai and today we're going to be talking about the Mai Turbo. This is going to be a little bit of a long video. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I'm just going to go over how to install it, some special things you need to know. And so I say, let's get going. So we're going to use a KO3 Turbo and when you get your Turbo, because I don't sell the Turbos, when you get your Turbo you're going to have to clock it. I do get a lot of people that call me and say, hey, you know, it's upside down. Well, the way that you clock it is you've got these wings right here with the 10 millimeter bolts. You have to loosen those bolts and then spin the wings out of the way. And then that center chamber there pivots so that you can get this in the correct position. This one is correct. As you can see, your log would be like that. This is how it's going to be. And you want your air, excuse me, your charge tube going that way. Your air inlet is pointing forward. In our kit we provide you with a little piece of rubber like this, it's just radiator hose, put it in some hot water, get it stretched a little bit, and you're going to put it there because we're going to do a two inch charge tube and this is not two inches. And so that's what this piece is for when you get it in your kit. We're going to have an exhaust manifold, we're going to have studs. I'm not going to get into the simple stuff. Obviously you're going to remove all the bolts and studs from your head. You're going to put our studs in, you're going to put in our exhaust manifold, and it only goes one way. So that one's a pretty simple one. Now for the Allens that we're going to give you to bolt the turbo, to bolt the what's called the exhaust tube, we're going to give you hardened Allens and we're going to give you very special washers. We're even going to give you some extras of these. Now what these are, these are curved serrated. So when you look at them, you want to make a flying saucer out of them. You don't want them both to be like this. You want them to be like this. You want them to go down, you want them to go up so that when they compress they lock. You'll be wanting to check these quite often on a brand new turbo. I mean quite often because it's going to get hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. We even give you some extra ones simply because we've had to send out one or two many times because people don't check these soon enough. Now eventually they will stop loosening up, but we do give you extra ones. So you'll have a bag and it'll say something like extra parts, do not install. And you'll have extra Allens and extra cone interlocking washers. We're going to give you quite a few of these. Uh, this is your exit tube. I'm not going to take it out. This bolts onto the back of the turbo. We'll be talking more about this when we have it up here, the whole exit system. All right, I think the best thing for us to do right now is to talk about the oil feed. So you're going to get the oil feed line usually assembled like this, and the reason why is because we make a special fitting, and this fitting is British pipe thread on one side and national pipe thread on the other. So listen carefully, the darker side is for the British. I don't want to get into the history of why the Japanese use British pipe threads. Um, read W.E. Books, uh, W.E.B. Griffin's first book uh, called The Core, and you'll find out why uh, the Japanese have British threads. Anyways, this block, we put the 1 8 NPT into there. The block is so that you can run your regular oil pressure switch. And then, of course, you'll get a plug with this also. This is a valve that we have, and this particular valve is so that you can make the oil drip, drip, drip into the turbo. The 80 PSI that you will achieve with a high RPM motor is too much for the KO3, and oil can get in the shaft, get in the charge tube, or go out the exit and smoke coming out of the muffler. So we need to restrict it. And speaking of restriction, this special fitting that I was talking to you about is a restrictor valve. That'll cut it down, but this gives us more capability, so this is how you're going to adjust your flow. And how I explain it to people is the first time you start it up, make sure you put some oil in the turbo, and then open this up slightly until you get a drip, 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 and then shut it off and then install it. Now at the very end of this hose, this is plastic on the inside by the way, it's very high pressure with the stainless steel wrap, but you can't kink it. If I, if I want to break it, all I have to do is bend it. You don't want to do that. These two special fittings here, this is a metric coarse thread that's going to go into the oil feed hole. It has an O-ring, so you don't want to get it too tight, 
but you also want to put some kind of dope or tape on this uh, simply because it's a straight thread not a taper thread and then on top of that you have an army navy or an it's called and then of course it goes to an an 90 which goes into the an 4 here and so that's your oil feed now your oil drain it starts at the bottom of the turbo when it's clocked correctly and you can see that it's got two threaded holes we have a gasket and then we make a special fitting here now this is from a T4 there is no T3 drain so we make it and basically what you're going to do is take your two allens and your two lock washers and you're going to put that on that gasket and I think you can see this easy enough and make sure that's nice and tight and of course Teflon tape and this is an AN10 fitting so that is what's your A, this is what's called your drain now from your drain we're going to give you different fittings and then we're going to give you an A&M hose you can do it different ways now if you don't know how to cut AN hose just look online YouTube it'll show you how to do it when you cut it to the length you want you always put tape and so you'll see tape on each end of this but make sure you clean it out. I use carb cleaner and then compressed air and if you just look at the floor you'll just see you put a lot of debris when you cut it. Metal and rubber. So get that out of your engine. Do not cut this and just hook it up. And that's how it goes with all AN fittings and AN hoses. When you cut them you've got to clean the hose. Anyways, you're going to have some extra fittings. We give you extra because maybe you want to go 4590, maybe you want to go straight in. We let you decide. This is going to be your AN10 drain going into your oil pan. And for the oil pan, I've made a little silver dot here. And you can see that it's going to be in front of the oil filter. And you have to make sure that you come in and clear this tray on a 1.3, 1.6 has a tray also. So you have to weld this in. We like to weld it in on both sides and then fill it up with uh, oil like this and make sure it doesn't leak because there's nothing worse than putting all this together and find out you did a bad job on that. So that is the oil feed and the oil drain and clocking of the KO3. Let's move to something else now. Alright, let's talk about the fuel system. What we do is we run a high pressure E-2000 pump. We're going to provide the pump, we're going to provide a little bracket, mount this to the frame. We do not provide any kind of rubber insulation in here, but you certainly can put a little bit of rubber in there when you clamp it. Now we either weld this or we bolt it to the frame. Do not put it on the body. It has an inlet, it has an outlet. The outlet is where the electrical is. We do not provide wire for this, but I'll be happy to explain to you over the phone, by email, how we like to wire these up. And that's again some things we don't provide for liability reasons. We don't want to be responsible if you wire it wrong and burn your car down. So we're using a high pressure pump. Now that high pressure pump, we've come up with a really super good way. Now this is also for all you EFI guys, the guys that put the 8 valves, the 16 valves, the 2.3s, and you're running a normal tank. We found that on top of the Samurai tank, there's an AN6 fitting, and we found this fitting here that goes from AN6 to half inch. So what we do is we put a vice grips on the round part of that elbow coming out of the tank, and then you know a wrench to take off that AN fitting. It's a metal line that goes over to the frame, and then it's a rubber line. Remove that, put this fitting on, and then we're going to give you 15 inches of half inch hose, and then we're going to give you a metal fuel injection filter and it's directional. We're going to give you clamps for all of this. And then we're going to give you a small piece. And what this is, it's a noise eliminator. All of you guys that have that droning, groaning, loud pump, it's because you're getting air in it and it cavitates. But we found that if we have a reservoir of fuel before it goes into the pump, it's a lot quieter. Like, if you have a, ground, a growling pump, it growls. If you have it, you can get this from us or you can make it yourself. And so that's going to get you the fuel from the tank. And then we're going to go from here with high pressure line. And of course, all your clamps are provided. It's going to go to the top metal line on a Samurai. And that's how you're going to get it up to the engine compartment. Now, from the engine compartment, 
And we've made these, but we probably won't keep putting these together for you because it's important that you learn how to do Army Navy stuff. But we're going to give you this one for the metal line coming into the engine compartment and clamps. And it's going to go into this American-made regulator. Now this is a very important regulator. I'm not going to assemble it at all. I just kind of want to show you what we're doing. So it doesn't make any difference which way you put it in. Normally we're going to put it in this way and it comes with a gauge. So the gauge is going to go in this hole. And you, as you can see here, Army Navy stuff is so cool. And so this is going to be the fuel in. And then we're going to convert to rubber and a inspection filter. And that's going to go to the Harley-Davidson carburetor. We like this inspection filter because it kind of tells us what's going on with the fuel delivery system. Now you'll notice there's one more fitting here. And it's a large fitting. This is the return line. What really makes this thing work is not using the return line that's on the car. It's too small. So we found this 3 8 inch line works really well. Now obviously it's going to go from the regulator and it's going to go all the way back. Be careful not to pinch this because if you do it will restrict the fuel and the pressure will be too high. You need to keep this under 2 PSI at idle because it boosts it's going to go up to 9 pounds. Now we provide a brass fitting here and we're going to have you cut the vent line which is the line that goes up to the filler neck. There's a rubber floor pad. You can remove that in the corner, passenger corner of the Samurai and you can see this line. We want this to be under the floor. You can have access to it behind the wheel on the passenger side on the rear wheel. There's a plate there. You take it off and you can see all this. But we want you to just cut that hose that this will fit into and put that hose in like that and this will be your vent line and this is how we're going to be returning fuel to the tank in large volumes. That is now the fuel system complete. Get it out of the tank, get it up to the regulator, get it back to the tank. 99.9% .9 of that fuel is not going to be used. It's just a circulating system. It does come with a little gauge here. These aren't super accurate, but they help you adjust it. And of course, I'm not going to take the package apart there because it's new. But as you can see there, you get a little fuel lap. This one goes up to 15 pounds. We want to be under 2 pounds at idle. And when you're boosting, this will go up to as much 7 to 9 is pretty average. All right, so that's the fuel system. Now, a lot of people buy turbos that don't have a Harley-Davidson MySide system. And what we do for you folks is we say, listen, we can go ahead and run this fuel system without boosting it while you break in, a, say, like a new remanufactured motor. You can't turbo a new motor. I've had a couple of customers say, well, we're going to do that. My machine shop's going to open up the rings and do things. It's really better if you put on four or 5,000 miles. And one thing I'll mention right now, if you don't have 150 PSI, that's even below minimum. If you don't have that, don't buy a turbo because it'll take, it, take that motor down really quick. So I ask anybody that wants to buy a turbo, what's the compression? If you tell me 120, I'm going to say rebuild your motor, put four or 5,000 miles on it, then get your turbo and that's how come we can get you part of the system get that installed break it in and then we can put on the exhaust log and the charge tube and all that later so this is pretty exciting for me to explain this because I never have and I've had to talk to 300 people on how to do this and so this is now the way I'm going to be showing people how to uh, get their turbo installed so let's go on to something else Okay, just a couple little pieces here that come in the kit. Spark plug boots. These are to make sure that your spark plug wires don't melt because the turbo puts off a lot of heat. We'll talk more about heat wrap in a minute, but that's the spark plug boots. This is your fuel pump block off. There's no reason if you have a 1.3 in your turbo in it to leave the mechanical fuel pump on. So take that pump off, pull that rod out. There's a rod at the top at an angle, just pull it out. And so you get a gasket and um, this will go right back on where the fuel pump was. And this is your EGR block off. It's just a little tiny plate that we whip up real quick here with some screws. Use some right stuff on this, take the EGR off. And this is a good time for me to talk to you about ports on the intake manifold. Now, 
If you use vacuum caps, the boost is just going to blow those caps off. So always use a vacuum line with a screw in it if you have a port that you have not used. And there's very few ports used. I will bring an intake manifold up here later in the video and show you what I'm talking about. But just some little pieces here that I wanted to discuss. Let's do the charge tube next. Alright, so here's the charge tube. Now we're going to have a picture of it. Some of the things aren't going to be in the picture because I want to talk about those specifically. But basically what we've given you here is sand tape. In our earlier turbos, you know, we would uh, install them here at the shop and people would call us and go, oh, I lost all the power. And, I'd go, well, maybe a tube blew off. And so they pop the hood and, yeah, a tube blew off. So what we have is this tape, and we want you to put that on the end of the metal wherever the coupler is going to be. Now, we can't put it on for you because you might cut these tubes. We just know that these tubes work in a samurai. This uh, one right here coming out of the turbo this one's going to get cut for sure so we have it made long so you can put it where you want to put it but this is the one that's going to go right on the out uh, for the where the boost comes out which looks like that snail and so as you can see here this usually gets cut here this usually gets cut here and that's why you have to put the tape on after so we provide all that tape for you now this is the air filter in and it's pretty complicated because it's going to go to that rubber piece I talked about earlier. See, that fits right in there. And then, of course, uh, it goes, after you heat it up with the hot water, it goes onto the inlet. And then we have 2-inch metal with all your T-clamps to a 3-inch metal to a great big air filter we uh, buy from Summit. So, you know, if you need an air filter, you can buy this from Summit or O'Reilly's. All right. So, as you can see, it comes with all the T-clamps. Now, this is really special. This is the air ring that goes with our my side kit. Not all of them have the little boost for the turbo. This is a wind catcher, and this is going to go up to the top. There's a fitting that comes with the Fuel Lab Boost Control Pressure Regulator. Remember that term, Boost Control Pressure Regulator. Well, this is the boost that's controlling it. So it will flow more fuel when you need it, when you go wide open throttle. So this is what we affectionately call an air ring. You might see it a little differently, but for instance, you might have a little piece of copper here on an old kit, and that's great, except for you need the wind catcher. So if you have an old my side kit, make sure that we know what you have for an air ring. We can always uh, you know, charge you more for this one. Maybe even get yours back and modify it for you and not charge you. Anyways, that goes in there. And this guy right here is super important. I'm not going to get into the Harley carb, what I do to modify it, but I am going to show you that there's a clear tube coming out of another wind catcher, and this is what's blowing into the carburetor to get the fuel in the boost line. Now let me explain that just a little bit. Uh, you've gone to a carnival, hopefully, once in your life, and you stand in the little ring and it spins around and you can't move. Centrifugal force. There's a way to um, get the fuel to be forced out of the fuel bowl, and I discovered that with some friends about five years ago. So you've got to get some air into that float bowl, and that's going to lift the fuel up into the jet stream. So without this, the fuel won't come out of the carburetor. Now the reason why it's clear is because the Harley-Davidson carburetors are gravity fed for fuel. Now when we're boosting it, we're putting a lot more uh, fuel into it. So we do not want to see any fuel in this tube. If you have fuel in this tube, we have an issue that you need to talk to me about so we can fix that problem. We don't know what it is until we talk to you and, and go through it. Um, I've had a fellow right now working really hard on one. It just keeps getting fuel in here. And what we think is that the needle valve has to come out of the carburetor. We think there's some debris in that chamber. I've noticed that when people take old cars apart and do hoses and still use old hoses, what happens is some de debris might get into the carburetor. And it doesn't take much to get that needle valve to get sideways and then the fuel keeps leaking. And that's the problem for him. Um, but this is uh, basically what I'm trying to describe to you is the charge tube and the air in. Now, the boost has to be released, otherwise you could have what's called a runaway uh, turbo. So we provide an adjustable, you see this turns right here, and what the, this does 
is it relieves the charge in the tube immediately when vacuum is applied to the intake manifold. And again, we'll be talking about the intake in a little bit. And so I'm going to leave this piece up here for the next series when we talk about that intake manifold. So one of the things I want to describe to you, this is called a blow-off valve. I didn't mention that. One of the things I want to describe to you is that when you have a carburetor, and we we're talking about the Harley-Davidson, there's a butterfly. And you have to understand that everything from the butterfly out through the charge tube to the turbo, that's boosted. But everything from the butterfly to the engine, that can be boost and vacuum. So that when you let off the throttle, it'll create vacuum in the engine. That'll open up the blow-off valve. The blow-off valve will release the charge in the tube and the turbo will slow down. And that's what we uh, do to prevent a runaway turbo. So blow-off valve is really important. And I remember my first turbo, I ran it without a exhaust for a while just so I could listen to it because I'd like to hear it spool up and I'd like to hear that whistle. Now, a whistle isn't always going to occur with this, but we do give you a different uh, fitting here that screws in here. See, this is just no whistle. The other ones are whistles. So I like to, I used to like to hear that, but it got annoying after a month of just listening to the, to the engine without an exhaust. Now, the blow-off valve is going to come with its own little bag of different hoses and different fittings and so we're not taking that out. It's got some O-rings for internal inside of it and different fittings for different size hoses. We provide a hose and I'll show you where we're going to hook that up on the next series. Okay, so that's your charge tube, that's your intake. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, uh, we're going to be talking about where the hoses hook up. There'll be a picture of this. Anyways, the air ring, the hose goes to the boost control pressure regulator so that when the wind catches inside there it, it uh, controls this and allows more fuel to go in. The pitot tube is going to connect to the top fitting of the Harley-Davidson carburetor. I'm not going to get into how I modify that, I just do. The, the fuel filter here is going to go into the fuel and that's the unbarbed fitting down at the bottom. The blow-off valve is going to connect to the large port right here in front of where the billet block is going to be for the My Side 1. Now, you guys with My Side 2s, which I hope to make again soon, you're going to have an issue. You're going to have to switch to a smaller vacuum line, and you're going to have to come off the port we left on the My Side 2s, uh, which we only left one port for for the distributor, but now you can use that for boost because you cannot have a vacuum line going to a distributor when you boost. And I wrote about this once, but we lost that uh, particular article. So listen to me. Whatever you have for a line, when the intake is being boosted, fuel is going to go up any line. So for instance, the choke on the uh, because the choke is part of the carburetor and the carburetor is boosted if you left the choke out it's going to start ripping fuel out if you have a line vacuum line going to the distributor fuel is going to come up into that distributor and there's a spark inside there what do you think happens when you have a few drops of fuel in a distributor and it blows up it kind of melts the distributor we found that out early on so we stopped doing that no vacuum to the distributor okay it has mechanical weights and advances anyways. So this is where the hoses get hooked up. Let's get into the exit. This is really important, this next one. How do we do the exit? We're going to be talking about the exit tube now. It comes with a 3 8 thick exit flange that goes on the turbo. You have to orient that for how the turbo ended up. And it's up to you to weld this in here to make it the correct angle. Maybe this way it has to go in a little bit. To clear your steering linkage, uh, clear the engine, stuff like that. And so that's up for you to weld. And then we provide clamps, but we also sometimes provide these metal uh, straps to hold on what's called the heat tape. Now the heat tape is fiberglass. I really recommend you use rubber gloves, but we give you just enough to wrap this. We don't want you to ever wrap the exhaust log. Let that heat dissipate by itself. You can get a turbo blanket, you know, to go around the turbo. Just make sure that it doesn't affect the wastegate rod. Now, we're also going to provide for you the turn to get into your exhaust system. And 
you know, that's up to you to open that, fix, you know, fit that, fix that, get that all welded in. We also provide metal gaskets for your inlet and your outlet with our kit. Now, your KO3 might come with them, but we provide, we buy these in bulk and provide those also. So that is your exhaust system. It gets hot. Don't wrap with any kind of heat tape, any kind of wrap. Do not wrap the log. Leave the log alone. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. All right, so here we are at the next thing. Kind of wrapping this up right now. Obviously, I will help you with the turbos. Right now, I have a lot of people waiting on turbos. Not really. It's kind of a small number. But we had a change of crew here. I'm going to get caught up with all the old orders as quick as I can. And then we're going to put them back on the website. I'm already making more logs because that's the biggest thing that we make. I had an issue uh, with getting a very important part. I think I've told you this before. But I have found, and I want to thank Trevor and Brad, I found people that are helping me make the My Side One block. And there will be other things that they're going to make for me too. And this is going to speed it up. And so we'll be able to get a lot of My Side Ones out by the end of the year, a lot of turbos out by the end of the year. If you want a turbo and you don't mind waiting, get on the list now because this next batch is going to go really quick. They really do sell fast when I put them up. Uh, one time I only had the add up for, or the page up for two days and I sold the whole batch. And so uh, thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe. This is really important. Um, we've passed 5,000 subscribers and I want to thank you, the people that watch. And a lot of people watch our videos. We're getting about 23,000 uh, views a month, but we don't have that many subscribers. So please subscribe. It helps to get that out to other Suzuki people. And I always want you to be safe, go wheeling, have fun, and thank you so much for supporting Zooks Off-Road. And so with that, I want to say goodbye. <laughs>